So this topic today is about autism. And with this kind of community that I see all over YouTube, like I, I watch a lot of their videos and I feel like I relate to a lot of those things that they go through, but I'm not fully in that community. Like my, my legs like one step in. Ellie doesn't ever care what other people think of her. And that's what I love the most about her. Um, you get what you get with her. Real people have like stuff to do and ew, they have jobs and ew, they have boyfriends. Ew. I'm just over here watching Teletubbies. <laughs> but today it's really gonna be an introspective kind of video because I'm gonna work through whether I could potentially have it or not. So stick with me and this should be an interesting journey because I wanna take you through my whole life story, okay? Let's go. <laughs> So when I was younger, I couldn't speak until around about the age of four. Couldn't speak at all. And when I did say something, it was t -t 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 like that. So then obviously my parents thought there was something wrong with me or maybe I had some sort of neurological problem or whatever, neurodivergent or whatever. So she took me to this autism clinic. You know what's funny? I kind of remember this day in my head, like there was like these little toys where you have to move the shapes around and you have to kind of like move the blocks and move like things through the poles and the liars. It's almost like a little IQ test for like children, basically. I remember finding it so easy. And when the practitioner came back to give us the results, she told my mum, this boy is so smart, get him out of here. I never want to see him in here ever again. So obviously that's pretty much good news. I was still doing t -t 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 all over the place, like it was mad. And we'll be later found out in later years, really, that the reason I did that was because my mind worked so fast that I was tripping over my own words when I connected in my brain with my mouth to actually speak it out. So when I speak to you guys right now, really and truly, what I'm saying, if I say I say three words, really in the queue, there's like another 30 words already queued up. So I can speak really fast like that, but I, I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> you get it like that. I can talk really fast like this topic right here, but I, I want to do it. That's how fast I can really speak, but I know it's not really intelligible to most people. So I just kind of slow down. And for me, I can't even lie guys, for me, slowing down to speak is very difficult low-key like i've always known that i'm a bit different from everybody else i, I i've known this because my interests my topics the way i move my style everything else is just completely different from everyone else but i do feel those feelings of like yeah i was going to school and it was like these people over here i just don't understand these people <laughs> like like the way these people are moving it just it just makes no sense and like the things like what i would find funny and what they find funny would be different i thought the reason why i couldn't understand them it was because they were smarter than me. I thought I was dumb back in those days. <laughs> it's funny to, to think about it now, but actually the opposite was actually true in reality. But back in those days, I thought I was dumb. I generally thought that I was not s smart because everyone else understood a certain way of life. And that way of life, I wasn't really following that program. I can't lie. People were listening to rap music and like hip hop and R&B back in the day. And I was like, this is so boring. I've only started to actually listen to music for the lyrics like in the last three, four years. I remember going to like school parties and stuff like that and then they would sing along and I was like, why do these people care to sing along? From a real young age, I saw the piano and I just, I fell in love with the piano. Piano has been my first wife, guys. It's been my first marriage. The moment I saw that piano, like in my church and other places where I see a piano, I fell in love with it and I knew instantly, within instantly, that that instrument I was going to learn. It was a love at first sight. It wasn't like my parents were coercing me to play the piano. No, I saw the look of the piano, just the look, the beauty of it. I'm like, I want to understand that instrument and beat it, <laughs> you know? And wow, I've got to unlock all of its secrets. When I was young, I remember asking my mum for a notebook in church and all of her friends are around, all of my friends are around and I asked her for this notebook. And she gave me the notebook with a pen and a pencil. I said to my mum, I wanna make some notes. So I sat there and I didn't draw the notes of what you guys usually think of like writing notes, like words. I drew musical notes. In general guys, I just didn't understand my peers around me. That's the truth, I don't understand them, <laughs> you know? And that created a lot of tension between my peers because I didn't get them, they didn't get me. And like I said, guys, I was depressed about it because I thought I was the dumbest in the class. My grades reflected that and my social life within the class reflected that. However, though, that being said, I was popular. When I say popular, I don't mean that I was the coolest kid on the block. But 
They did things that I didn't really enjoy, like football. Football. Every lunchtime and playtime, football was the main attraction. Football to like primary school kids is like alcohol to lawyers on a Friday night. Like these guys have to get it done. And Loki, even though I played football them every single time, Loki, I never enjoyed that game. I did it purely because everyone else was doing it, but truly in my heart, I did not enjoy football. Compared to the stuff that I do, there is no intellectual pursuits with football, man. That thing made me brain dead. But I did football because everyone else was playing football in the class. So I had to do what was needed so I could retain my status in the social hierarchy in my classroom. But I always hated doing it. But these guys died for the football. They collected the football cards. They generally enjoyed looking up to these football players. Like these guys were like gods to them. But in this time though, I still played the piano religiously. I fell in love with the piano on a mad levels thing and I was doing eight, 10 hours a day. What I then later realized was well, this is something called hyperfocus. Um, hyperfocus is when you can like focus on one thing for like extended periods of time. When I would come and tell my classmates, you know, it's like I was up till 4 a.m. in the morning playing piano for six hours straight. They would look at me like I was some quote crazy like buffoon. But to me, this is completely normal. And that further solidified the tension between my classmates and I because first of all, playing an instrument on your own accord, that's weird to begin with. Now, if your parents force you to go piano lessons, that's, that's one thing. But I chose to learn the piano on my own accord and I did it for crazy amounts of time. And I became good, real good. And not only that guys, but I never had a teacher ever. I learned all of it by myself. So you can now see how these dots are now starting to connect like, Obviously at the time, I didn't think of that as autism, but looking back at it now, as a 27 year old man, it's like, oh, there's some flags coming up that are coming up there for you, boy. <laughs> it's quite evident, my boy, because I'm not like everybody else. I'm playing piano by myself and I'm playing piano well too. And I'm doing it for a long period of time. These are all like signs of like certain uh, neurodivergence. And to have the girlfriend at 11, 10, 11-ish, whatever, until about, I don't know, 13, that was just normal for me too. And I didn't have no like qualms about it. Did I understand her as fully as I could have? Yes. Um, no, sorry. Looking back at it now, in hindsight, it's like there's certain things that I wasn't, co co I'm gonna say cognizant of, but at the same time, it's not that I wasn't cognizant of it, it's like, I knew those things were there. I knew that I could read. You know when you say that about autistic people, they say they can't read social cues. Now with me back in those days, it wasn't that I couldn't read social clues. I could read them really clearly, but it was that I didn't care to follow the social norms and I didn't mind paying the consequence for, for, for not doing it. Okay, say you're talking to a friend in school and you kind of see that this topic is making them a bit nervous or intimidated or shy, or whatever it might be, which puts them into a bad place. You know, you have an option. You think to yourself, okay, let's stop talking about this topic because it's upsetting their feelings. But, you know, back in those days, I knew that it was upsetting them, but my mindset was like, it's a free country. I can talk about whatever I want, which is morally true, but socially, it, I've come to realize it was completely wrong because you just lose out on a lot of things that way. But morally, it is true. You can say whatever you want, any way you want, because it's a free country, free speech. I believe in free speech. But free speech goes only so far because you have to understand that it's a layer of social ability too. And back in those days, I just didn't care to follow the rules of social ability. To this day, I don't understand. Like you have an hour for lunch and these people will just go outside and just talk or just sit there and play football, or just sit and do nothing. And that just made no sense to me because like, I'm wasting time here. So what I would do each break time and lunchtime was go ahead and go to the music room and you know, play the piano in there. Every single lunchtime, break time, I would be in that piano room playing the piano and I became like a star in there. I was the, the top of the social hierarchy in the piano room. People come to me to listen to my music. People come to me to sing along with me if they were a singer. People come to me just to watch and bring their friends and have a good time, have lunch there. The piano room was my domain. I owned that place, you know? After me and my first girl kind of broke up, the only relationship I had between then and 18 was 
one for like a week. It wasn't because that I couldn't get girls. This, and it's, it's one of my biggest regrets because I only realized this like seven, eight years ago. It was just because at that time I was just so laser focused on being the best pianist that I could be that girls, relationships, that just didn't play no weight in my, in my, in my um, decision making. Like I said, I only realized this eight years ago, but there were so many girls <laughs> in high school that liked me. <laughs> but I just didn't give them like any of like the, the signs back. Like, I just didn't. I like, there was this one, <laughs> and I hope she's not watching this, but this one girl, which I actually liked the most out of all the girls in high school, right? And she was like, oh, she's a beautiful girl. I went through high school thinking that this girl would never like me. And I looked back at it and I thought, wait a minute. Back in year seven, year eight, every single lunchtime, her and her best friend would run up to me and talk to me for no reason at all and try and make conversation, but I was too shy and I ran away. And I just ignored them. And they would do that every single like week pretty much. Even on PGL, like, like looking back at it now, the vibe was there, but I just thought like they weren't really into me because they were so like good looking, whatever. I'd be just like queuing up for like the lunch and she would, and her friend would just run up to me and start a conversation. I'd be like, like, you know what I'm saying to you, but so, I, so it wasn't like I didn't, I couldn't like get the girls or they weren't attracted to me. It was just because that I wasn't really thinking about it. If I had sat down like rationally and thought about all of these steps and signs and like how to progress things forward, you know, I would have succeeded spectacularly in that department. But because my mind was just focused on being this musician, like, everything i'm not saying just girls like everything school didn't matter family didn't matter eating food didn't matter what came first was me playing that piano so i got like about five six or seven gcse's i really can't remember because i really i really don't care about them i i just don't deal with academia i'm, I'm the kind of guy that like, learns because it will benefit his life not because to get an uh, exam result why do teachers expect us to have impetus and motivation to revise for something that only gives us a mere exam result that doesn't do it for me however if you tell me that script writing and how to use a camera is what is needed to become a YouTuber, then I'll do it all day, every day. And the teachers look at me as, as if I'm weird for thinking like that, but it's like, isn't that what real life is all about? As I've grown older, guys, I've started to see more and more of the separation between me and everybody else. Back then, there was definitely a gap, but as I'm getting older, my whole life setup is just so different from everybody else. Like, I'm like a weirdo. You know, one of my, good friends that used to help me with my mentoring stuff like that you know he once told me are you a bloody robot has run my likes my taste my interest i'm like it's so different like people go clubbing clubbing is so boring when i did go clubbing and i did go a lot back in the day like when i was like 18 19 it was because i had my first id i could finally go to the club i wanted to see what it was all about and then i wanted to get girls so i went to the club to get girls and um now that i've got really good at doing that I don't go to the club no more. What I've realized is people go to the club just to like dance and let loose. And like for me, dancing is so boring. One thing that I can relate to with the autistic community is that the masking thing, you know? The way I'm at home and the way I am with people in real life is different, you know? I, th I think people might seem as an extrovert because I have no qualms being the life of the party. That's me. I can fit in any party, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> I can go up to someone, start a conversation, join their friendship group, be friends with them. Next thing you know, they take me to their house, they let me join the party, now they're taking my numbers, blah, blah, blah. I can do it easy. That's no problem for me. Social ability is not a problem for me at all. I can do it very, very easily. Um, but when I'm at home, I like to just sit back alone. I like to be alone. Oh, it's great. I love to edit at home alone. I love to play the piano at home alone. I love to watch TV at home alone. But the question is, is that because of autism or is that because I'm just doing what's needed to be done to get through life. And this is where I don't really fit in here, guys, because the whole eye contact thing, I can hold eye contact with anybody. I understand how people are feeling very easily. I understand patterns and behaviors and I, I, easy, easy peasy for me. I probably think nine times out of 10, I'm reading the room better than most people. I credit my success in life so far purely on my social awareness and my bravado and my charm. At the same time, it's not really me though. I like to just be at home and have a beer. I just do what's needed to be done to get friends, to get work, to get new clients. It just needs to be done. So I put on what people want to see. 
even though it's not me because if I'm with friends or at a work party with my clients and they're all dancing I will dance along with them but that doesn't mean that's what I want to do from what I understand in the autistic world that is something called masking that part is always like yeah I, I, I'm in there my foot's in that boat I understand what you guys mean by that but I don't have any problems with like girls and anything like that I can get a number ask them on a date boom 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 da -da 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 -da. you know what happens next but is that because I'm just naturally smart and charming? Or is that because I'm not autistic? So it could be like the fact that I am autistic, but I'm just so smart that it gets overridden and you can't really see it. I, I, I don't know. And I am into a few of those kind of like typically autistic kind of like hobbies, like planes and trains. But is that because I'm autistic or is that because I'm smart? Because I have no interest in going to Heathrow Airport and then watching the planes for 10 hours or whatever. I'm interested in going with my camera to the train station and just recording it. But right now I just want to whip out my phone here and type in autistic traits. And I want to see if any of these traits fit with me. Common signs of autism in adults include finding it hard to understand what others think or feeling. Ah, I understand it very well. Getting very anxious about social situations. Nope. I am completely free and open and just talkative and me. Finding it hard to make friends or preferring to be you on your own. The finding it hard to make friends part, no. No, not at all. Easy peasy. Question is, do I want friends? <laughs> this is where it gets confusing. It's like, I know how to make friends. Question is, do I want them? <laughs> like, you know, I don't really want them. Seeming blunt, rude, or not interested in others without meaning to. Nope, I know what makes people feel good and I dish them out good feelings on demand. If I like you, I know the things to say to make you feel good about yourself. With me, everything that I do is very like purposeful. Finding it hard to say how you feel. I don't have a problem with that at all. Question is, do I want to tell you how I feel? <laughs> That's the question. Usually in the conversation, I will let the other person talk about themselves. The easiest way to be liked by, by people guys and to be likable, to be sociable is let people talk about themselves. Just ask open-ended questions where they can just keep talking and you sit back and go, hmm, yeah. Taking things very literally, for example, like not understanding sarcasm or phrases like break a leg. No. And I've seen like Sheldon in Big Bang Theory and he has that. He, the guy cannot understand sarcasm. That's like a very blatant, very extreme version of autism. But he like he doesn't get the joke. Nope. I'm the one making those jokes. The girls that I've dated, which I've loved the most, allow me to like just be sarcastic. I mean, jump back, back and forth, being sarcastic and flirting with each other. It's amazing. And then it says, having the same routine every day and getting very anxious if it changes. No. I hate and despise routine. You can't get me on a routine schedule, guys. Then it says, you may also have other signs like not understanding social rules, such as talking over people. Nope. I understand the rules very, very clearly. But the question is, is that because I'm smart and I just learned how to play by the rules or is that because I'm just naturally talented at it hmm anyway avoiding eye contact no eye contact is powerful getting too close to other people getting upset if someone touches you or get close, get close to you no if you're an attractive woman like touch me all day like I'm, I'm ready for it noticing small details patterns smells or sounds yes details yes anyway when I was younger like 22 or so 21 something like that. One of my piano teacher's dads, he was a psychologist and he said to me one day after hearing my story, Hedron, you seem to be really smart. Have you been tested before? So he gave me an unofficial IQ test because he had a few in his like his office. I did it and I got 136 IQ, which places me in like the top 2.3% or something like that. When I realized that I was in complete shock because I thought I was dumb for so long, literally until that, until that day, I had believed that I grew up being dumb because all of the things that society respects like degrees, qualifications, GCSEs, I did not have. Having a very keen interest in certain subjects, yes, piano, trains, planes, now cameras, what else? That's about it really. I don't know exactly what the hell I am. I believe that I have a combination of all these kind of traits like Asperger syndrome, autism, ADHD, I think I have all of them. But I think what's happened is I've taken only a few of those traits that kind of like 
all year down socially, but I've taken in mostly the good traits. So I can hyper focus like a autistic person can. I can have loads of energy like a ADHD person can. I can be very creative like them too. So I've taken all these good traits, but I don't really fit solidly into like one. I don't relate to you guys that say, yeah, I can't make friends or I can't understand people and I don't understand what's going on and I can't handle social, social, social situations. I'm not with that. I am a social butterfly. But at the same time, I have these kind of traits which indicate that I could have some sort of neurodivergence. So follow this story, guys. And either way, it's not like autism or ADHD or any of these little things are a bad thing. Not at all. But for me, it's just trying to figure out who I am and where I place. Because I'm, I'm a flipping oddball, guys. I'm just a weirdo. I'm a weirdo, really. My combination of traits is really weird. It's like I play jazz piano, but then I go on my skateboard back home. I can play Chad, guys. I can play Chad. I can really play Chad. But deep down inside, I'm a giant nerd. And most people, especially when they first meet me, would never would think that, you know? Because I run the production company now. Very few people know that I play piano. And when I tell them I play piano, it's like a massive shock. What? You're intellectual? <laughs> like, yes, I'm intellectual. I love, I love learning. I love philosophy and I love nerdy things. I love to talk about inter intellectual things that make me smarter. But um, you have to play the game, guys. When I meet people for the first time, I'm not coming across as a nerd because if you come across as a nerd, a lot of people won't really like you. They think, they think you're weird and silly. My real friends, they know who I really am deep down inside and who how I really act and think. But outside, when I go outside and I go to meet a new client, if I meet a new person for the first time, yeah, I'm masking, I'm putting myself to be like everybody else. But really and truly, I hate listening to pop, rap, hip hop. No, I don't want to do it no more. I don't enjoy sports, not interested. Clubbing, dancing, going, going to the bar even is boring. Like so many of my friends said, oh, let's go to the club or bar for, for my birthday. I was like, please, can we just have like a dinner for like an hour or two and then just go home after that? The world has been designed for the average and I'm so far away from the average that I can't expect them to join my train, you know? I have to join their train. And even though there's a million of their trains, only one of me, I have to play by their games. Every time I go to a club and they listen to like hip hop and rap, even though I want to listen to jazz or classical, you know, I have to sit there and listen to their boring music. But I'm so sorry, I don't, I don't want to sound rude, but you must understand, like, I've been living like someone that's not me for so long. Like, it's so weird. Like, you might, you might think that I'm weird for saying that I hate your music, but you have to understand that every single time I've ever been to a club, I do not like the music that's being played. Do you know how hard it is to live in a life like that where every single time you, you go out with your friends and you go to the club, that you, the music doesn't interest you, it doesn't get you going. The kind of music I listen to when I, when I, play, when I play it to my friends, they, they tell me to switch it off. When you're different, it's a hard, hard, long world, but it is who I am and I've learned to accept that I'm on the outlining group. Because at first I was so outraged with the fact that no one wanted to follow my way of thinking, no one wanted to follow my hobbies, my genre. But I just learned to accept that no one cares about what I like. Most of the things that make people happy do not make me happy. Most of the hobbies that people have are not my hobbies. And most of the hobbies that I do have, most of that do give me joy, both people hate. And generally speaking, I don't show people who I really am because they will not like it or appreciate it. Hey, I'm on a Hezron. I play, I listen to jazz music, I play jazz. No, 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 no. It's more like, hey, I'm Hezron. I play piano, but I can play your favorite pop song. Guess what's going to get you liked more? Of course, the latter. So this is the life that we play, guys. Put down in the comments below if you've got any like neurodivergent like things, or if you can relate, or if you want even a part two of this, because there's so much more I could talk about on this topic. So if you want a part two of a more chilled back, relaxed, talking, kind of like simple monologue video, hit me up, guys. This is Hezron Springer, and this has been the Hezron Springer Show.